Today I made a giant chicken pot pie. This one's really easy. So first you're just gonna take two cups of cooked chicken. I just used a rotisserie chicken and chopped it all up. And then two cans of the cream of chicken with herbs. And then two of these bags of peas and carrots. You're just gonna stir that up and then add a little chicken broth. I did about a half cup to three fourths cups. And then you're gonna season that real good. I did garlic powder, onion powder, and some pepper. Put it in a nine by 13 pan. Pat it down real good. And then you're gonna get these puff pastry sheets. I only used one, you could use two if you want. I just rolled mine thin and then placed that over the top, just like this. I pinched mine, you could just throw it over too. And then I put two little slits on the top of this, just like this. And then I got an egg out, scrambled that up, and then I put a little egg wash on the top of this to make it all nice and golden and crispy. And then I baked it at 400 degrees for around 40 to 45 minutes. Just take it out when it's all nice and golden brown. The whole family loves this one. It's so comforting and filling and just delicious. Today for dinner, we made some fried potatoes with sausage, onions, and peppers all in one pan. I had to use up all of these potatoes, so I thought this was perfect. So first we started off by just chopping up our potatoes onto these little cubes, and I'm gonna parboil my potatoes in the microwave. I did about 10 minutes in there with some water, and then I'm gonna cut all my veggies. This is all just what I had. You can pretty much put any veggies you want in there. So I chopped those all up pretty small and then got this link sausage out too. Cut that all up. And then you're going to get a skillet or an electric skillet, whatever. I have an electric skillet. Pour a little oil in there. And then I'm going to use these seasonings. I did ranch and some Slap Your Mama. And once those potatoes are done, you're going to put those in. <laughs> you can see they did a great cutting job on the potatoes. And then you're going to season them just with some salt and pepper to start off with. And then you're going to cook those for about eight minutes or so per side, maybe 10 minutes per side until they're a nice golden color that you want them to be. Just about like right here. And Cause then you're gonna throw your veggies and your sausage in. And then you're gonna add those seasonings. I did slap your mama and ranch. Make sure you stir that up really well. And then I fried again for another 10 minutes or so until everything was nice and golden brown. At the end, you can top it with some cheese. I did half of mine with cheese for the kids that love the cheese and then half without to like it plain and you can put some barbecue sauce or any kind of sauce over the top if you'd like we love this one it's really simple to make and everybody loves it i highly recommend today i made frisco melt sloppy joes on garlic bread i'm obsessed with steak and shakes frisco melt i thought this would be a fun version to make at home so first i did the sauce for it I did about three fourths cup of Thousand Island dressing, a half cup of French dressing, and then a dash of Worcestershire sauce and a few tablespoons of ketchup. Just gonna stir that up really well and then cook your meat. So I did a pound of ground beef, threw in an onion in there, and then I added some burger seasoning. So you're just gonna stir that up in there. And then I did about a fourth cup of beef broth. And then you're gonna put a little more Worcestershire sauce right here. And then a tablespoon of cornstarch. Then you're gonna get your sauce that you made and put about a half cup in there of that. You can put more of that sauce in there if you want, if you want it more sloppy for your sloppy joe, or you can do less, whatever you want. And then I baked the Texas toast style uh, garlic bread. I just do it as the package says. And then you're gonna layer your cheese and your meat on. First I did a slice of American cheese, and then I put my meat mixture down, and then I did a slice of Swiss cheese. I only had enough for six, just so you know. So add more ground beef if you want all eight done. Then you're gonna put those back in the oven for another four minutes or so. But these turned out so delicious. I ate three instantly. I'm so excited to share this recipe because it was absolutely delicious and really easy to make. So it's a beef, rice, broccoli, cheesy casserole, and it's really creamy and just so good. All right, so first it's two cups of instant rice, two cups of beef broth, and then a can of this cream of mushroom with roasted garlic. You could really do any cream of whatever soup in here if you don't like mushroom or anything. You're just gonna stir this up in your pan really well, and then you're gonna cook a pound of ground beef. I did mine with an onion, and then just season that really, really well, and then throw that in to your nine by 13 with the rest. Then chop up some broccoli, and I put about a cup of broccoli on top of this. Make sure you chop it small enough. 
And then I did a six ounce block of this white cheddar cheese and I put that on top. And then you're gonna top it again with these french fried onions. Just sprinkle those on, I didn't really measure here. And then I covered this and I baked it at 375 for 25 minutes. And then you're gonna take that foil off and bake another five to 10 minutes until those uh, french fried onions are a little bit golden. It was so creamy and so good. I highly recommend this one. Let me know if you try it. Tonight for dinner, me and Lena made a cheesy chicken hash brown casserole. So first we just took a bag of this frozen hash browns. It was the 28 ounce bag, I believe. We just threw that in a separate bowl. We did about um, two cups of sour cream and then a can of the cream of chicken. Then one onion diced up and then two cups, two and a half cups of shredded cheese. We used pepper jack this time, but you can use whatever you want a rotisserie chicken and then a lot of garlic powder i was not paying attention and then some salt and pepper she always needs help with these ones she had something in her eye here she needed to check it out so you're going to stir this all up in your giant bowl and then put it in a 9 by 13 pan as good as you can and then flatten that down a bit so it all fits and then we put some cornflakes on top of ours we want her to go kind of old school and then I melted some butter and then spread this all on top. I baked mine at 350 for around an hour. You'll know it's done whenever those hash browns are nice and golden brown like this. It was delicious. Today I made orange chicken in the crock pot. It's one of my kids' favorites. So first I took two and a half pounds of chicken and I cubed mine up. You're going to put about a half of a cup of cornstarch in there and you're going to stir this all up so everything is nice and coated just like this, and then you're gonna get a hot pan with some oil and just brown that in there for about three minutes or so. You just want a nice little crust on those. And you're gonna to toss them back into your crock pot. You don't have to do that step if you don't want to, but it tastes a lot better. All right, and then you're gonna take this whole jar of orange marmalade and you're gonna put that in there. All right, and then you're going to add low sodium soy sauce. I did about three fourths cup of this. And then you're going to add a teaspoon of ginger. I think I did a little too much there, but that's all right. And then I did a tablespoon of sesame oil and a big scoop of minced garlic. And then one and a half tablespoons of rice vinegar. And then a few teaspoons of red pepper flakes. You don't have to do this step at all if you don't want any kind of spice to it. Stir that up really well so everything's nice and combined. And then you're gonna pour this over your chicken that's in the crock pot, mix that up a bit. And then I cooked mine on low for about three hours. I love making this meal because I can make it all around lunchtime and then right when the kids get out of school, they'll have dinner ready and all my dishes are already washed. Highly recommend the kids always clean their plates with this one. Today I made buffalo chicken and rice casserole all in the oven and it was so good. So first you're gonna season your chicken. I did about two to three pounds of chicken tenderloins. Just season that how you'd like. I did garlic powder, onion powder, some ranch seasoning and some pepper. And then I also threw in a chopped up bell pepper. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. And then two cups of instant rice. All right. and then set that dish aside and then get a separate bowl out and add one can of cream of chicken with herbs. And then I added a cup of wing sauce. So if you don't want it that spicy, only put a half cup in because it was very spicy, just so you guys know. All right, so stir this up really well. And you could actually put some ranch seasoning in that. I meant to, but Georgia distracted me. All right, and then two cups of chicken broth. And then you're going to pour your sauce over all of this. Kind of give it a nice stir. It was so good. <laughs> And then I baked mine at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes. And then I took the foil off and then baked for another 10 or so until that cheese was nice and melted on top. It was so creamy and delicious. It was very spicy. So remember to admit some of that hot sauce if you don't like a lot of spice. Definitely recommend this one if you're a big buffalo chicken fan. Today, me, Lena, and Georgia made Big Mac hash. So first we did our potatoes. We did yellow potatoes. We chopped those all up into cubes. And then you're gonna preheat that oven to uh, 425. Spray your cookie sheet with some oil. And then I sprayed the potatoes with oil as well. And then you're gonna season those, just do how you like. I did salt, pepper, um, onion powder, garlic powder, and just mix that all up. 
And then I'm going to bake this. I baked mine for about 50 minutes and I stirred it halfway through. Mine were a little crowded though. So yours might not take as long. So then we made our Big Mac sauce. We did a cup of mayonnaise, about four tablespoons of sweet relish, about a tablespoon of mustard, and then um, a little dash of white vinegar. And they're going to season it with some paprika, onion powder, uh, garlic powder, and then stir that up really well. Lena has never had big, a Big Mac, so she tries it right here. She liked it. <laughs> I knew she would. All right, then you're going to cook your meat. I did a pound and a half of ground beef. You are going to cook that, then add an onion all chopped up in there, and then just season that. I did this gourmet burger seasoning by Weber and some garlic powder. So just uh, stir that up real well. And then you're going to add about a half cup of that sauce back to your pan. Stir that up really well. And then I topped mine with a little shredded cheese. And then I just put the lid on it and let that melt. And then set that aside. And then when those potatoes are done, you're just going to put that meat right on top of the potatoes. And then you can top it with a little more of that Big Mac sauce. This one was delicious. We all loved it. Lena especially liked the sauce. It was her first time trying it. We will definitely make this one again. I highly recommend. Okay, so today we are making mini pizzas with wow. our um, cupcake tins. This is our pizza crust. Yep, she's gonna spray that up. Good job. <laughs> Okay, so we're just gonna use this little cup. Okay. And then put our little piece on the bottom of our tin. Okay, so now we are gonna put the sauce on. We got some thicker and some thinner. Leave it. Mommy, yeah. Nina. Okay, it already has some on there. Mommy. Cheese. Put a little bit on each. I mean, no. Just a little bit. Like that? Mm -hmm. Our toppings we got um, pepperoni and then. Yeah. Let me try. Yeah, you can try. Yummy! 